Cool. So uh, here we are working on exercises this time. Um, the most important thing, there are two things I want to emphasize before I even start playing. One is starting position, you know, just like taking however long it takes to get your hand ready to do the types of things we're about to. Not, and, and that's a lot easier done than starting with your old technique and trying to adjust versus just taking however long it takes. And, and one way to do it is like, you know, just make sure three fingers can all sit on the same string where um, where you can, you know, fret the string beneath it. But either way, th there's one thing I wanted to emphasize is just get in good starting position however long that takes. We realized the thing today about how you've been sitting back and your arm being on your leg has been really uh, hindering your progress. And that pulls everything down here and causes the problems that we're having right now. So we need to, you know, so it's just straight. Like if you were playing an electric guitar, it would be sitting more where you are right now. So that's what's up. It's just, you know, if you can sit forward just with your feet shoulder width apart, this stuff will be easier. And that's the thing we realized this time was that resting your arm on your leg is something you've been doing uh, that you know, we're not going to do anymore. Um, so anyway, starting position. Resting your elbow on your leg being part of it. Um, that end, when we're doing these exercises, don't play in rhythm. Don't try. Don't turn it into a song that goes, "I do this, I do this, I do this." The point is to really stay in your conscious focus headspace while you're doing each little movement, even if it takes a while to wrestle your hand into the position and go for one good one, versus turning it into a song that goes, "This is this, this is this." You hear me doing that because I already can do this. Um, but yeah, you at home, you know you're just going as slow as possible. Um, cool, so this is, and there, there's our first exercise. I just moved all this stuff to um, B minor, but it actually looks like I was writing it up. Um, at any rate, we're doing it all on uh, A minor, uh, B minor pentatonic. Or, uh, let's see what I was writing here. Yeah, I just wrote, I just, did a one single type of it. So this one, let's just stay in A, the key you've been playing in. Um, and on the first two strings, this is going to be more difficult. Uh, but you're more used to bending on those strings than like the fifth string and the fourth string. However, when you're on the fifth string and fourth string, you don't have to spread out into this uncomfortable position. We're still just in three fingers, three frets land, versus down here where that's more uncomfortable. So I'm going to suggest you start on the third string, the G string, and you know we bend that string up, and you know, and then we're going. So before we do the reachy hard one, so you're going to start on the G string, and go third string, fourth string, fifth string until that starts to get comfortable. And you know, again, and rhythm is not the point. It's uh, just going and then stay on that string and just do it and try to consciously interact with it. And then moving here, now we're bending down, third string, down is fine, up is fine. And on the third string, there's context where we have to bend up, there's context where we have to bend down, but third string's the only one where it could go either way, fourth string, down, fifth string, down. Which is easier, you can get more leverage going that way. Um, yeah, so, you know, we were just going, and uh, we talked about how, you know, as long as you do some kind of decisive movement for the pull-off, as long as your first finger is spreading, it'll sound. Another thing to watch yourself for is that your middle finger might be muting the string for a split second, so just be sure they both move at the same time, versus going like... That, that might have been a thing that was happening, where just for a microsecond your middle string was, you know, muting that string. Either way, there we go, so, you know, third string, fourth string, fifth string. And, um, so stop and just do that some, and, you know, like, like I'm saying, just work each one on its own, really emphasizing starting position, and then just going for one good one, rather than a bunch of hope I get at once. Um, and, uh, so there, there, you know, do that as the first increment of stuff you're working on. Um, and now just kind of try to be mindful of using your fingertip as opposed to flop down, which is all a product of the same technique things and do the exact same things you were just doing on those three strings, adding that level of making sure that, you know, we're bent at the first level. Like when somebody was like, how do you 
right on guitar, they told you to use your fingertips, so you're just touching one string at a time. That's what we're working on right now, is the ability to do that. And right now we're on the strings where it's not a reach. We're just on, I have three fingers and three strings. So cool, so now just trying to be mindful of that too, just do the third string, you know, fourth string, fifth string. Cool, so when you get comfortable with that, just hop down to the second string and do it for those two strings, which are more difficult. So you'll have dealt with X percent of the stuff in a more comfortable position, and then we'll go four. And and it's so yeah, like we were talking about, it's neither that we don't move at all. You know, I mean, I can go straight away from the instrument and my pull off sounds, but going more like you know, as long as it's a decisive movement, you'll be cool. So just watch yourself for your middle finger maybe meeting there. Make sure so it should feel like when you're starting, I'm pushing down with one, two, three fingers. And these two are attached to each other, you know? So there you go. And you know, on this string it's gonna be considerably harder and therefore starting position will be more important. So just like you were doing in the lesson. And rather than moving around, just do it on that string a bunch of times. Pausing in between, consciously focus. And if you do that, the first string is only, you know, an eighth of an inch away, so it'll be the same thing. Uh, watch yourself for doing a big juxtaposition change when you get to the third string. Like, if you're going across all six strings, people tend to be like, I'm playing, and then we get to the third string, doing something like that, where, like, we switch to it, you know, it's, it's a very small change going across all six strings. Easier, either position. And, you know, uh, the style that I'm teaching you right now is for exactly playing loose pentatonic licks with a lot of nuance. There's plenty of times where we're in classical tone position, like we talked about during the lesson, exactly doing things with reaches in them, or more chords, whereas thumb over the top is more for I'm playing in first position, and playing chords back, or the things we're doing right now. So it's not that we never play in classical position to shred and so forth, you have to, but right now we're just doing stuff like that, so it's not that it's one or the other. Um, cool, so there's our bend-based ones, and still just be doing this stuff from last time, just working on articulating a bend, just going and uh, just do it with being mindful of uh, your first finger being on that string. Something like that. Cool, so there's the first one. We're at 7.35. The other one I wrote down is related to working uh, on the... We're no longer bending, now we're working on being able to land on a string where you can sound the string beneath it, where you're going to you know, ring finger on the fifth string, first finger on the fourth string. And this all starts with this position that you might already use when you play A in first position with your first finger sometimes, if you do that already. Um, or the same thing we do when we're playing this chord where we're trying to hit three, but either way, the only part of our hand that goes flat like we need it to is our very first top knuckle. So this is, you know, me bent there, and that's what enables us to get up, along with good position, high enough to where your fingers don't feel like, man, they just flop down, which is my thumbs up a little higher or whatever. So yeah, you know, just, you can just kind of do that. And then, um, yeah, the first one we did, we're going. So yeah, the hammer runs just on one single string. And my finger, my index finger here is barring one, two, three strings. And then I'm bent up at this knuckle, which is what allows me to get into this position rather than if my finger was straight where anyone would feel like that's impossible. In fact, it is impossible. Uh, cool, so here's us kind of like, you know. And we'll probably do alternate pick that, but just do whatever. Don't worry about your right hand. So, you know, wrestle with that on the fifth string, fourth string and third string, figure out which one of those is the most comfortable for you, and then just ride that one until it gets comfortable. Um, they're not that different. But yeah, so we're going, you know. Not even worried about the first two strings yet, but that said, we want to be in a position always where we can go, if I was on the, you know, I'm playing my ring finger on the B string, like I'm playing pentatonic stuff, and then my first finger on the high string, where my ring finger isn't so flopped down that I can't do that either. But that's something we're just staying away from this time in our exercise and just focusing on more of our comfortable three fingers ready to do stuff position. Um, so there you go. And don't you know, just totally take rhythm out, it's just the thing you're doing.
Uh, version 2 of that is the exact same thing, just instead of starting by hitting one string, we're hitting two strings. And the only way to pick you know, two strings without hitting three is with a down and away movement. So what I just did there has two parts. It's got the melody line and then the thing behind it. So there's us doing that and then just hitting one string on the way back up. So we were going one string, two strings. It's the exact same left hand movement now. Like nothing is different at all whatsoever. There's no adjustments required. But we're just going working on power chord or whatever. So yeah, it's exactly the same one before, but we're instead of going to one string followed by two, we're going two strings followed by one. And when we hear this, we don't hear, you know, if I'm going like, our ear hears way more than, but sure enough, they're all actually in there. called double stops for what it's worth or sometimes referred to as double stops where you're on. So yeah, th it's only possible by getting up high enough like that with your first finger and you know any other version you're just going to end up flopped down like that. So there we are. And any kind of combination of the two, but with this one we were just working on the easier strings to run on. For all intents and purposes, your middle finger could be doing nothing during this exercise as we're not actually it for anything, but what we don't want is for it to sandwich up on your first finger, which is a thing that happens for two reasons. One, um, if you're in like this position or whatever, or and two, subconsciously, there was a time when you literally couldn't bar multiple strings without doing that. Now you can. Uh, well, something we talked about during the lesson was being more out in front of the instrument, and specifically, you know, we've got a first knuckle, a second knuckle, and then our whole hand. We're trying to facilitate a position where, as opposed to your hand bending at the second knuckle, you're actually bending at the at the third. You know, when you're up on these strings, but you're actually out in front of the instrument with a, uh, you know, just in this C shape where I'm not here, where it's just this part of my hand, but I'm here where it's, you know, the whole, this is out in front of the instrument as well. Um, cool, so there we go. That's the stuff. We've got our... Well, I can't, you know, definitely if you follow the video and just, like, pause and do one at a time, it won't seem so bad. But this is what's supposed to be hard. This is why you're doing lessons. It's all good. Uh -huh.